Hey everyone, in this video we're going to rebuild a carburetor for a 1996 Evinrude 150. If you follow my channel, this is the same motor. Uh, I was doing a carburetor rebuild and I dropped the carburetor in the uh, canal. <laughs> so, uh, this was full of mud and water and um, I managed to retrieve it, which is, thank God, uh, because you can't actually buy this anymore. It's obsolete. You'd have to go get it used off an old motor. Which, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do, because I explored this um, boneyard, this uh, outboard and, and boat uh, salvage yard in uh, Georgia, and it was incredible. I found this uh, old uh, Gloucester, Massachusetts uh, crab boat that must be, I don't, you know, maybe 100 years old. I mean, I don't even know. It was so old, and uh, I totally explored the whole thing. So. Um, I'm going to do a video on that when I when I have a chance to edit it down. But anyway, uh, in my last carburetor rebuild video, I did not actually show you know all the details of replacing the high speed jet and um, you know this thing that I do myself here on the bowl. Uh, so anyway, since this one ended up in the canal, I figured I would uh, go ahead and do a complete rebuild. These are the canal pieces. Now this was actually rebuilt. You can't buy the gasket that's missing, uh, which was this gasket here on the back. I lost that in the canal. You can't get that any, well, I guess you can get it. You can't get it at my local place, so I had to buy the whole kit, about 30 bucks, small price to pay to uh, be able to salvage or at least find it. I'm fine with, uh, with the whole process. <laughs> Just happy that they had it uh, so that I could do this over a holiday weekend here and try to get this uh, boat back right up. So anyway, here's what you're gonna need. A carburetor rebuild kit. This is part number uh, 438996 from uh, right there again. Um, original OEM, comes with a bunch of parts. Some of these parts you're not gonna use. You'll need a big flathead screwdriver for the uh, plug here. You'll need a small flathead screwdriver for the high-speed jet or orifice. Some people call it a jet. Evanrude calls it an orifice. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver to attach uh, these various parts. Um, these are the screws that hold the carb to the uh, to the intake manifold. Uh, we're not going to use those until we're on the boat. And then one of these, one of these doesn't look like the other. It's probably so. Let's see. There's there's these which attach the side plate. There's these four, which attach the bowl to the carburetor body. And then there's one more. And what this one does is it actually goes right in here and it screws to the intake manifold to kind of hold it in place. So this gasket has a better chance of staying put when you're putting in uh, these screws, uh, which go in like this, all four of them and that's what holds the carb onto the motor, like that. Okay, so uh, so let's get started. So these parts are actually pretty new. This gasket, the float, this gasket, and uh, this is the silencer, air silencer um, ring or something. It goes right here, and it's what the air box presses against uh, to um, seal out uh, it must be just for noise because that's what they call it, silencer ring. This little thing was underwater. Uh, this pin and this clip uh, are probably fine, but they come in the kit, so I might as well the, use the new kit. Um, and uh, this is comes in the kit uh, with a little thing, so we're going to replace that. And I think that's it. So, so let's get started. So here in the kit. we get um, some parts that we that we don't need. So the first thing we're gonna do is figure out which side plate gasket, this is the side plate right here, which side plate gasket we need, and it's this one, the one with the hole in the middle. So this we're not gonna use. And then it only comes with one uh, bowl gasket, so that's the one we're gonna use. It comes with three of these uh, back gaskets 
and I know it's not the red one. And I really don't remember, do they look the same? Oh good, they don't look the same. They want you to identify which carburetor body you're using. And we're using uh, 436797. And we're just gonna find 436797. And we wanna use seal part number 344046. So that's the black seal. They're different. Um, and I know that it's this one, right? Because these two are the same. Uh, this one will not even fit on here. It's a different uh, design. So, so that's why I, I, rem I hadn't done this in a long time. Um, but that's why I remembered that it was very obvious. Uh, so this we're not going to use. And this we're not going to use. Uh, we're going to use this one. And I am actually going to have to stop the video and get uh, just a little bit of grease. This actually is got a little grease on it. But what I normally do is just put a little bit of uh, grease on it. And that just helps it sit in position. This will be the last thing that we do. And um, it fits right in there like that. And just a little bit of grease helps it to uh, stay in there when you put it like this against the against the motor so it doesn't fall out. So that's the last thing we're gonna use. We're gonna leave that aside. Okay, uh, because I mentioned that all this stuff is underwater, here's the high-speed jet, here's the old plug. Um, here's the, uh, the uh, float plug. I don't know what this is called, but this is the new parts here. So um, they don't give you a high-speed orifice. So you really do have to clean this thing. You can see the front here is a little gnarled up from years of taking it out and putting it in. Uh, just the screwdriver going in there, I think, and trying to find it is what has kind of screwed that up. Um, but you should be able to easily see through. See right there? That's what it should look like. Nice and clean, totally open. I'm gonna stop the video here real quick and get some, uh, some lubricant just to put a little light coat of lubricant on this because it was actually under water in the salt <laughs> and I don't want uh, any corrosion issues. You can see just a little bit of surface oxidation there just from drying uh, overnight. Um, so I'm gonna put some corrosion block on that. I'll be right back. Okay, here's the products I like. Corrosion block, waterproof grease. That's what I'm gonna put on the uh, gasket and then corrosion block liquid. That's what I'm gonna put on these uh, little brass parts. Um, just gonna take, and I'm gonna put this one right here and this right here. Just give it a little shot. And um, there's some other part that I wanted to do. It's this one right here. So this goes in here, and I'm just gonna give a little shot here also. Um, and this will be submerged in fuel, so I'm not worried about that. Um, this one here is gonna be out in the open. So I'll just give that a little shot. And I'll give it a little shot here. Now, the main reason why I'm doing this, so if I didn't drop this thing in the canal, I don't think I would worry about any of this. I'm gonna do this just because it's gonna make me feel better. Um, it's just that water, you know, if normally you wouldn't clean the thing with water, right? You would clean it with a, with like a carburetor cleaner or degreaser. Um, but because it was underwater, that's why I'm doing this. I'll wipe this off. So, Probably a good good measure, but if you didn't drop yours in water, you wouldn't have to do this. Uh, so this part here will not be, um, potentially could not get fuel on it because it's screwed in, but of course everything else is gonna get fuel on it, so I'm not worried about that. And then of course this here is the same. Um, there's a tiny, tiny little hole. Let me just blow it out. And you can see it right there. See the yellow coming through right there. So tiny little breather hole here. 
that just releases the vacuum on this area of the carb. Uh, so anyway, so, okay, probably could have done that without the video, but I um, figured I'd do it anyway. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the jet back in the bowl. I should tell you about this bowl. So there's a little ball bearing right here. And in my experience, this ball bearing weeps fuel after about a year. Uh, these bowls will, bo uh, you know, bow right here, mostly right here and right here. And that's really your main problem uh, with them leaking and why you would wanna replace them. But this ball bearing will leak fuel. So what I did was sanded this out uh, sanded the whole thing and um, blew it out, washed all the dust off, and then filled it with 610 epoxy. It's a West Systems epoxy, really strong stuff. And I found that you get many, many years if you just uh, seal this up and it won't weep fuel. So you just drop the jet in and uh, you can see it down in there. We're going to uh, just spin it in. You can see it going right there. And you don't have to worry about bottoming this jet out. I mean, it needs to be in there snug. So that is snug. And then I'm gonna go about just a, about a half turn. And you can really, you can feel it stop. It's a, it's a hard stop. It's not a needle. So you're not gonna squash it into anything that's gonna be a problem. Um, then we're going to replace the O-ring on this. There should be a new O-ring in the kit. It's right over there. Uh, just cause, you know, this was underwater. Uh, I am going to go ahead and spray this with some corrosion block. And we'll go ahead and get the uh, O-ring out of here. The O-ring's going to go right there. And then we'll put the uh, plug back in. So I don't know what the torque spec is on this or even if there is one, uh, but what I do is I get it snug and then I turn it about a half, not even, about a quarter turn right there and it's plenty snug. It indents the plastic just slightly uh, and that's it. High speed jet is done, plug is in, this part's done. Then we're going to turn our attention to this part here. I'll go ahead and put this orifice back in. Uh, and I believe what this does, it, it comes out right here. So in my opinion, all this fuel path is just to uh, create vacuum so that, not create vacuum, but the vacuum that the motor creates at a mid-range idle uh, has to pull this fuel all the way through here. And that um, geometry is the right amount of fuel for the... Uh, for that particular RPM vacuum, if that makes any sense. Uh, this thing just screws in. Uh, this little brass part is permanently embedded in the housing, and this orifice, you just screw it in and you just turn it. Again, it's not a needle, so you wanna get it in there tight, and, and that's it, that part's done. This thing is another, uh, vacuum vent of some sort. It just gets pushed in right here. And it faces backwards. And once you put it in, you can twist it and get it exactly where you want it. Um, it should be parallel uh, with the back of the throttle body. So like that. Okay, then we're gonna uh, put the uh, gasket here. This little gasket goes right down on top of there and it will seal against here when everything's closed up. So you've got the gasket here and then the gasket on the outside that goes here. We'll, we'll do that later. Um, next we're going to put this plate back on. So you position this pad uh, so that it's over all the correct holes. And I'm just gonna do just one final visual inspection, make sure there's nothing in there, which there isn't. So that goes right there. And then this plate goes right there. 
And then these five smaller screws uh, just go right in. And remember, you're screwing into plastic, plastic that's likely been screwed in and unscrewed many times. I mean, 90, 1996 was a long time ago. Um, and I like to uh, put them in lightly. And then kind of like you're, you know, putting on a tire, I'll go around and tighten them individually. And go um, crossways so that we get this thing on as flat as possible. Okay, so we'll go ahead and squeeze this down and you can see the gasket kind of squish. We'll give this one a quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. And now I'm just snugging it up until basically the screwdriver just kind of slips in my hand. This I like to use a smaller screwdriver when I do this because it makes it so I can't um, I can't over tighten it. It'll just slip in my hand. What? Yeah, doesn't matter though. What's up? You want me to take the screens out? Okay. Ugh. Let me do it right now. Okay, next up we're going to put the seat and the needle in uh, for the float. And I'll show you this again real quick. Uh, it's perfectly normal for it to buckle right here. That's totally normal. It buckles, uh, but it's sealed where it needs to be sealed. Um, I've never experienced any problem and they all seem to buckle like that. Okay, uh, there we go. So in this bag, we've got uh, the gasket for the seat, the seat that I already took out, the needle, and the clip that goes on the uh, float. And the float is here. Um, and we have the new, um, the new little axle, I guess, for the float. So first thing we're gonna do is put the washer on the seat. Goes on like that. And we'll screw this down in here. This is kind of an oddball slot. Um, seems like a screwdriver that's big enough to make it all the way across is also too fat. See what I mean? There we go. This really isn't the perfect size screwdriver, but I think if I push hard enough, so I'm just gonna push really hard Oh, see, it's, um, I might have to go find a narrow, a thinner screwdriver. Yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I went and got another screwdriver. And uh, you want to be careful not to, like, cause any little metal flakes. <clears throat> like what it sounded like I just did. I think we're fine. I can see that hole down there. You can see I jacked this up just a little bit because none of my screwdrivers fit. I didn't realize that this was, uh, I didn't do the other six. I'm redoing this one because um, I dropped it in the water, like I mentioned. Um, so ideally I would have a screwdriver that fit in there, but I don't. And the only thing I wanna be just super extra careful, I'm just gonna blow this out from here. So basically what happens is fuel goes from here, or I'm sorry, fuel goes from here uh, into here. Um, when the float moves, it allows fuel to flow. And when the float is uh, pressurized, uh, going this way, I'm, you know, because it's floating on fuel, it jams this needle into this hole and stops the fuel flow. This right here is where the fuel comes from out of the uh, intake manifold. So 
um, I'm gonna blow right here. And just to make sure that I didn't get any little metal shavings in here because any little metal shavings in here will end up uh, in the bottom of the bowl, which will end up in the high-speed jet, uh, which would be a problem. So I feel pretty confident about that. All right, next up is this um, float. So the way you know how it goes in is there's this little um, you know, does it go this way or, I'm sorry, does it go this way or does it go this way? Well, the way you tell is there's the tunnel for the high-speed jet, and that's what that is for. It's so it can sit uh, around that tunnel. So this goes on like this, right? Uh, so therefore, uh, this goes on like this with the tunnel facing up, okay? The uh, first thing we're going to do is put the uh, little shaft in right here, and that's gonna sit right here uh, when we're done. And there's just a little retaining screw that goes right here, but first we're gonna put this uh, little needle valve on. So the first thing you do is hook this little tiny clip onto the top of the needle valve like this, and you'll feel it clip on. Even though it is incredibly thin and tiny, it's not so fragile that you can't handle it. Uh, that needle jet will be on there, it's on there loose, but it's not gonna fall off in any way. I'm gonna make sure that the tip of the needle is clean, which it is. And then you want to uh, put the needle valve on the float just like that. It just hangs there, and just because the whole thing is assembled is what holds it in position. Uh, so we're going to put it back on, right? You can kind of put your finger there just to hold it so it doesn't fall off. We're going to, uh, whoops, I've got the camera slanted, so it'd be better if this was, there we go. And we're going to put everything like this. And there we go. And then, um, and then the screw this screw right here goes in right there and that is the only thing that holds the shaft in place the shaft in place. Uh, but that's what, uh, so normally this thing is in the motor like this, upside down, right? Let me go ahead and tilt the camera up. So this is sitting like this, bowl fills with fuel, uh, fills with fuel, fills with fuel, and then stops and presses the needle valve, you can see it moving, up into the needle valve seat, stopping the fuel flow. Now, this thing has an adjustment, which it needs to be perfectly level with the body here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, you wanna take a screwdriver, and for this, so see how it's sitting up? It needs to be all the way down, but you can't just bend it here, because you'll push the valve down into the seat and it'll, it'll it, you could potentially dent something in there. So you have to take the pressure off of the valve and bend it. And the way you do that is you stick a screwdriver right here. So let me uh, turn the camera back down so I can do this and know that you could see it. Um, and you got to do it on each side. There may be a tool for this, I don't know, but this is how I do it. So you take the uh, and by the way, bending it up is easier than bending it down, so you're better off to bend it too far down. So I take my screwdriver, I stick it in here, I bend it slightly up, and then I push down ever so slightly and bend the float down. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Some mechanics don't do it on both sides, and I'll, and I'll show you what happens. You end up with a crooked, see? You end up with a crooked bowl. It has to be level this way 
and this way. You end up with a crooked float, is what I meant to say. So we're gonna lift it again. I'm gonna stick the screwdriver right there. And we're gonna push down. And you can see I'm getting a little dimple right here. And I can tell you right now, that's probably perfect. So from this way, we can see that it looks like I am slightly down too far on this side. So I'm just going to uh, carefully bend up right here with my finger. Just gonna bend up just a little bit. Up, I'll look at it again. There we go. Look how, uh, still a little bit crooked and I tend to be completely anal about this. However, what I'm noticing is um, I still need to come down a little bit here, a little bit here. So I'm going to bend this down just a hair. And it doesn't take much. And when I look at it from the front, I'm now pretty le I'm now level, but I'm too far down. See what I mean? It's not, it's not level. The whole float fl slants this way. No bueno. So I'm going to just slightly lift evenly on everything. Look at it again. And I do obsess over this stage because I really think it matters. So now I'm slightly high on this side. You can see that. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to put the thing over here and just bend this way. You know, you just have to use your brain a little bit on what is going to be the best way. There we go. So now I am perfectly level this way. And I am Yeah, I think I'm eh, I'm going to hold it up and look at it. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty good about where this is sitting. It looks, you know, it is just slightly, slightly high, just like a tiny bit high. So I might screw this all up by doing this and have to start all over again, but I'm just gonna push down just a little bit. I'll put this over here, push down just a little bit. We're gonna make sure that we're still level this way, which we are, and look at that. That's all it needed. So now, this thing is perfectly level from all directions. And that's what you want. Okay, so that's all there is to the float. Now we're going to uh, put uh, this valve on. Again, it's another no-brainer. It only goes on one way. You put, um, oops. It only goes on one way, uh, except for that other way. <laughs> And that isn't actually the hole that that goes in. It goes in this hole. Uh, but it is really almost impossible to screw up. So you have this little nub right here. This is a little raised nub that holds it in position. And you've got another little raised nub right here that holds it in position. Um, again, this is one of those gaskets that uh, will buckle a little bit. Um, we, we already put the gasket down in there. Uh, we have the jet in place. We've got everything done. We're going to just lower this on like that. And I'm going to pinch it with my fingers to hold it together. And we'll put the screws in. Now, one thing I found about these screws is that they seem to only go in, they only tighten so, so much. You know, it's a very coarse thread. And I don't know if they did that to make it so you can't uh, strip them. Um, generally, fine thread uh, does not uh, back out as easy as coarse thread. Uh, but in this case, because you're going into plastic, um, it's a very coarse thread, and they tend to feel spongy. Now, part of that could be because of the number of times this has been done, but I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So I put them all on snug, and now I'm going to tighten it, and you'll see here, it'll squish the gasket there. See that? So squish the gasket, go uh, to the other side here, squish the gasket. You know, it's kind of like you're putting on a car tire. Squish the gasket and squish the gasket. So here's what I mean about the way they feel spongy. So again, I use a smaller screwdriver so I can't over tighten it. It just slips in my hand. But I'm gonna give this some 
some good torque and it'll just kind of back out a little bit to kind of sit where it wants to sit. I mean, it's not wicked tight, but the gasket is fully squished and it's totally sealed. And you'll see on this um, new one, I mean, if you're replacing this, your bowls are likely totally bowed right here and the new bowl is not. So then uh, this screw, remember from the beginning, goes uh, in here to hold the, uh, hold the thing to the, to the intake. So we're not gonna use that until we go out to the boat. Uh, but this one I'm going to put a little bit of grease on. Of course, I don't know what I do with the grease. Here it is. Put a little bit of grease on. And let me get it back in, whoops, back in wide angle. Um, I'm just going to put just a little bit of grease on my finger. Doesn't take much. And I'm just going to give this a nice thin coat. Maybe just a little more. All right, now we're going to press it in. And if it doesn't want to stay, just put more grease in it, I think. There we go. And I have found that if you do these, yeah, see how nice that's sitting in there with the grease? Um, if you do these and um, you let them sit for a little while, while you're doing the other six, for instance, they stay better. It's almost like the grease kind of dries and makes it like a little bit of a glue. Uh, but anyway, that is all there is to it. Uh, we're gonna go put this back in the motor. Um, I'll put this on uh, when we're done. I just brought it in because it was actually underwater and I wanted to wash it. Uh, but that is how you rebuild a carburetor uh, for a 1996 Evinrude 150. And um, if you liked this video, please subscribe because I post new totally random videos of pretty much whatever I'm into. Um, I bought some moccasins uh, recently, uh, really cool leather moccasins. I, speaking of leather, I have a, a really cool leather beer koozie. If you're doing this, you likely like beer also. Uh, so that's a good reason to subscribe. Uh, and the reason I said at the beginning of the video was I cannot wait to post this video on this boneyard that I found in Georgia. It's just such a cool video, um, uh, or it's such a cool place. Uh, I, I'm planning on the video being super cool. Uh, but, um, but anyway, please subscribe so you don't miss those cool videos. Thanks for watching. See ya.